Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I get an opportunity to work on another of uh, Charles's wheels. This one is the Yvette SX 5.3 to 1, and that obviously is uh, the gear ratio there. This is the MC Cast made in the United States. And uh, Avet has been known for power packing a whole lot of feature and function into a, a short format of a lever drag reel. Uh, this was really made uh, possible by the uh, introduction of braid lines. So where we used to have the bigger lever drag reels, the braid, braided line reduces the need for that capacity because it packs more lines or uh, yards on a spool, on a shorter spool. And so a vet and uh, others uh, introduced the slope, uh, the small profile, a small profile format for the lever drag and it's been wildly successful. Well Charles brought this one in, says it needs, uh, needs a tune-up, so that's what we're going to do for him and when we do that we're going to uh, show you how to do it in case you have one or if you're thinking about it and uh, that way, uh, well, you can do it yourself which is what I'm kind of promoting in this channel, uh, how to uh, fix and repair fishing reels. So a couple of things when we get started, you'll notice I wear a glove on my non-dominant hand, the uh, one that kind of helps along the way. And I use a parts tray, and of course, just by uh, the nature of this video, I take pictures. And all of those are important as you set about doing your work on a fishing reel. Because, well, if something goes wrong, you'll always have those pictures to refer to. If uh, you find that there's a mess inside the reel, well, you kind of save yourself the uh, cleanup afterwards of uh, trying to deal with your uh, stuff on your hands and all. And uh, overall, it's just a good practice of how to uh, be successful in this, uh, this endeavor. We're going to remove the handle screw now, or the nut cap. That's an 11 millimeter nut. And as I'm doing that, I want to encourage you, if you like these kinds of videos, to please subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to the channel, uh, please hit that notification button. That'll help you know when I'm posting, and uh, you can make some decisions along the way as to whether you want to see the particular reel I'm working on. And uh, if you do, well, uh, you'll be among the first to know that it's out there and available by hitting that notification button. We just removed the spool, uh, I'm sorry, the, the handle. You don't need to remove this handle unless you intend to work on the gears inside, but if you just wanted to uh, clean out the inside and work on the drag, well, you can do that without removing the handle. But again, I want to show you how to do the entire reel so that uh, you know how to service it completely. Now we're going to remove the cap that holds the spool and the line guide assembly in place. Notice that there is a spring underneath there. It's nestled in the cap here, but if it falls out, there, uh, the spring goes here. There's a little bit of grease on that cap, so we'll go ahead and put that, get that out of the way. And there's two little points, they're, uh, they're ball bearing kind of needles. They're going to uh, click as you do that to let you know where you are with the lever. When I remove the lever drive wheels, I always like to have the reel in free spool. That way it kind of lines up everything for when you go to reinstall. With that off, you can pull the lever back. And this should just be a permanent fixture here. I don't believe you have to do anything with that. There's three case screws now we're going to remove. That'll give us the, the balance of this. These are Phillips head screws. And when I do that, I like to uh, put them on my table just to make sure that... Uh, well, that one just doesn't want to come out for whatever reason. It'll come out when we remove the plate. I uh, want to make sure that they're all the same size screw because if they're not the same size screw, you want to mark where they came from and uh, that'll enable you to uh, put them back in the same place later. All right, we're just going to poke these two through, get them out of the side plate, because a lot of the times what happens with these is that you're uh, not paying attention and they hit the table and the next thing you know, you're looking for them on the floor. All right, well, those three are the same size, so those are going to go into a corner of my parts tray, which I showed you earlier. Now we have the pressure plate with a burring up top. There's a little bit of dirt on the back there. And then on the, underneath this, we have a couple of things going on here. We have an anti-reverse dog that's run off an eccentric on the main gear. 
we have a pinning gear, and we have the case. On this side, we have the anti-reverse dog's click ratchet and a uh, fresh plate with a sealed bearing on that side. I'm going to remove the two screws that are holding that in. And this is a good place for a picture. This, um, this little plate here, well, it can be reversed pretty easily. So you want to make sure you know which side is the wide end and which side is the short end. There's an arc on this side here. You can see that kind of accommodates that um, gear. Keeps it out of the way of it. So make sure you know when you go to reinstall that the one side is different than the other. Mark it accordingly. All right. Those two come out. Put those in another area of my parts tray. And now we can remove the main gear and the anti-reverse dog as part of that. And most of the time when you push this off, this, uh, this arm now, this eccentric arm, is going to become exposed. And you can kind of work it off. Just remember how it went, and you're going to put it back on. All right, so I'm going to leave the ring there. You don't need to do anything with that. We can remove the main gear, the pinion gear, and we can clean up the old greases in this uh, assembly here. So Charles did tell me it's been a while since the reel was serviced, and I can say that the condition of the reel inside sort of bears that out. It's not in terrible condition. These reels, stand, uh, they're powerful reels. They kind of withstand an awful lot. So I'm using non-abrasive first. That goes on the bearing. Non-abrasive uh, cleaners first. If I need to get more, a little bit more aggressive, I'll go use a piece of uh, kitchen scrubby or a um, piece of steel wool or something, but this doesn't warrant that. That's usually reserved for things like greening on uh, chrome-plated pieces and the like. Right, so we've kind of done our job there cleaning this case up. We want to turn our attention to cleaning up the main gear now. To remove the stud. Now, some may think that was rather bold to pull the stud because how are you going to remember which side of the gear is the same? Well, this one's easy enough. It has a square insert for that stud after that gets cleaned up. So I've wiped both sides to get rid of the old piece there. I'm going to take a hard brush. You can use a toothbrush or you can use one of these brushes from the hardware store or uh, wherever you get your supplies. Dollar stores probably have these, I would think. And uh, I pull that towards the paper towel so that any of the grease that I've removed from the channels of the gear uh, do not uh, fall down on my desk here, so I'm risking the uh, contamination of the next one in. All right, I'm just gonna put a nice healthy coating of fishing wheel grease on this. I use Pen Precision Real Grease, that's the blue grease. And uh, I uh, really don't have a preference for fishing wheel greases. What I do have a preference for is that you use fishing wheel greases as uh, part of the, uh, the servicing. And I'm just going to lay that over the top for a moment. And we have our pinion gear. And again, this one is interesting because, well, there's two sides to this. There's a long and short side. So if you've forgotten how that goes, well, it's going to be trouble again. This goes into the bearing like that. These are sealed bearings. It doesn't hurt you, but it doesn't help in any way to put oil on this. I'll put it on there just to, so that the pieces that come in contact with this, primarily the main gear shaft here and the post from the pinion gear absorb a little oil on the way in. All right, we've got this greased up. We're going to go ahead and put this back in just like that. And then remember, we have this anti-reverse assembly here. So before I go all the way down with this piece, I want to make sure that I reconnect this override. So to do that, you leave that a little bit proud probably means it's standing up there. Hook the corner, then run it under the other leg, like that. Then we can push that down, 
you can kind of rotate that main gear until you seat the, the ship. Having accomplished that, we just want to put a little bit of grease into where that anti-reverse dog is going to sit. Grab the anti-reverse dog, seat it, and then make sure that you attach that to that little stud that uh, is on the wire from the eccentric. Well, I got that into the cavity too quick and I did not attach it. So let's try that again. Just takes a little bit of patience. And while I'm doing that, if you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, if you leave it in the comment section, I will try to answer that question for you. It can be about this reel. It can be about uh, fishing reels in general and the like. All right, so here's how it's going to work. You're going to be working on it, reeling fine, and then you'll notice when you go to back off, the beak of that anti-reverse dog is going to come in, and that's going to connect with the ratchet on the back of the pressure plate. Okay, after you've set that aside, next up is to remove the spool. You service your, your spool and to clean up the back end of this assembly. And there's nothing really goes on on the back end. There's a holder there for the shaft of the spool. And there's a click ratchet. So I like to just clean that up. I'm going to use a spray of penetrating oil here and a cotton swab and just get what little is in there out of the way. And you can clean up the insides of the bars while you're at it. Wipe it all down. Put a drop of oil onto the click mechanism here so that it rides smoothly. That's all you have to do on the back end of the case. Now for the spool side, we have a host of pieces on one side. We have a center core shaft and on the other side we have the burring, spring, and there should be two small little washers there. Yeah. Okay. On the drag washer, this one's in excellent condition. You don't need to do anything with that. They recommend if you're having a sheen on these, go ahead and get a, a brush and just kind of gently clean out the tracks of this. And I'm not sure if, uh, if a vet has the one that's glued on or if this is replaceable. This one appears to be replaceable, but no, no, no service is necessary on that, and you do not need to, uh, to grease that um, track there. Make sure the inner cavities of your spool are clean. This one's very clean. We have a series of shim washers on top, and then followed by a burring. Then we have an internal sleeve that goes on the non-handle side. So it comes through here. This one is not a, uh, a sealed bearing. This one's shielded. So you can put oil in there. It also doesn't hurt to oil inside the sleeve and the sleeve itself. It'll just make that turn a little bit easier. With that done, we can put that onto the back side and seat that in the uh, behind side of the spool. Just like that. Okay. I'm going to put one of those as a bearing shield on the back side. And I'm going to put that bearing in. I'm going to put one of those on the front side. That makes sense. And then I'm going to put that little spring together in there. That's your spool service. Once you've done that, you want to reseat the spool. I'm just envisioning a nightmare here with these loose strings. Go ahead and line the spool up so that the points of that uh, crossbar, that's what I was thinking, I was going to trap the line. Pull that, just pull that through. Make sure that your spool turns easily. This needs to, to lock in on this side. And then we can just take the assembly that we just worked on, greased up, and cleaned up and everything. That goes through the top end here. And you're going to have to press down because now you're spring-loaded here. Make sure that your case is nice and even throughout. You hear that click is the best sound in uh, the business. And uh, interestingly enough, before I uh, finish, I just looked at my parts tray and 
to all of you out there that were saying, when is he going to put that little cover on that uh, anti-reverse dog? When is he going to put it on right now? Thank you for noticing. And these two little screws. That's the value of a parts tray. You can look in there and see what you missed. Fortunately, we didn't have this all the way down and buttoned up and everything else before that happened. Remember what I said, you wanted to track the side of the uh, this little carrier here, or clamp. You wanted to make sure that the art side was the one below. And again, pictures would have helped if you got confused. Okay, now we're done there. That's better. So I was just reaching for the side plate screws when I noticed that. All right, we'll do this again then. We're going to merge the, the plate and everything in and get that nice click. Take one of those side plate screws to mount in. And now we're reversing the process of the pieces and parts that we took off. Next up is the Second side plate screw. It doesn't matter what sequence you put these in because you're, you're basically dealing in, a, dealing in a pyramid or a triangle shape. If you had four, you would want to go kind of like north, south, east, west to distribute the load, but here that's not necessary. All right, next up then goes our handle, and this is why I said it was important to, to note where you were on this. And again, we loaded this in on the free spool side of this so it makes it easier when you go to reinstall. The spring is inside this uh, pre-adjustment screw then. I'll turn that down. I'll show you how to set that in a moment. Then we want to grab our handle assembly. Remember we had this raised washer here. Now on one side of that that's got a little bit of a lip. If you were paying attention, I was, that goes inside not towards the handle. And the handle goes on, and the handle cap goes on. You do this by hand if you can. Start the, the nut cap by hand. It's just good practice so that you don't cross strip the handle nut. Make sure that, that gets tightened. And now you're just working to align the tie down with the cap and the nut. So that's that's close. You can put that on now and just turn your your handle into the two sections of here. And then go ahead and grab those two small screws that are going to hold that collar down. And those of you that are watching this video know me and small screws well. We have a habit of uh, not playing well together. This one just seems to be dumb luck. All right, so all of the reel is back together now. It's a time to set the free spool release. We should be in free spool now, and it should be turning nicely. When you go to first strike, it should be moving the handle. Well, it's not moving the handle, so back it off to free spool and continue to adjust that free spool tensioner. We're in the free spool going to the first strike. Now, that, uh, now that's turning, so you know that you're in the range of what you're, you're going to like. I'm going to turn this, and we're going to go for full strike while oh, it's there, and you want to make sure that you're, you're all powered there. So that's very close to the way it should be. I'm going to leave the final adjustment to Charles, because how you fish this uh, first strike, second strike is really kind of a matter of personality and, and what you like in the field and the flight of a fish. So it could be backed off a little bit. It could be, I, I think we're pretty much at the, the max on the drag side, but it could be backed off a little bit. I'm going to let him do that. Before you end this, bring it back to free spool. And the reason why you want to bring it back to free spool is that you don't want to compress that di uh, disc washer and leave it in there because that uh, disc is um, going to be gain premature wear if you leave it clamped down all the time. Well, that's it. Uh, it's the Avet SX 5.3 to 1 MC. It's a nice reel. As I mentioned, it's a compact design. It's great in quality. 
it was a game changer and it still is a game changer and it's really a fun reel to go a lighter tackle on and fighting big fish so i hope you've enjoyed that if you did again please uh, like it and subscribe if you do subscribe please uh, use that notification button to find out when i'm posting more to everybody who's a first responder and essential personnel thank you for everything it is that you do and have done during the pandemic and to all please stay safe stay well and stay watching this is dennis with second chance tackle have a great day